let's get started okay thanks everybody for uh, joining so we are on the study group weekly recurring study group for our uh, fast ai uh, dl now the dl and ml both versions are kind of merged and we have kind of uh, doing the study group until the next part of the version 3 of the course starts right and the agenda for today is kind of there for you to see so we have a uh, kind of four presentations today two by uh, sanyam one by vasiti and one by myself time permitting the agenda that we have for today is this uh, uh, sanyam will walk us through the process of making your own deal rig uh, he and his uh, business partner i think have put together a business rig a deal rig and he will walk us through that particular bit as to how if anybody is interested could go about doing that the second is uh, a very specific topic on the uh, you know fp16 the 16 floating bit uh, precision marks and sanyam has done some benchmark test on that to say you know whether it really helps in uh, you know reducing the memory footprint and increasing the batch size and thereby the performance um post that we will have uh, haider uh, joining us and um, he will walk us through importing pre trained models into fast ai and this is uh, the pre trained models which are not a part of the uh, you know the actual existing pytorch models that's what i understand uh, this to be so that's a quite interesting uh, topic that he will walk us through post that uh, i would try to walk us through the uh, concept of one shot learning what that means why is it required and what does it take Uh, to do that and that usually is done by the the siamese networks and then we have of course time for discussions and of course calling for volunteers and other interested people for next study groups presentations so that's the agenda that we have for the day uh, for the session today so over to you sanyam and you can start with uh, your uh, you know making your own deal rig presentation so sure, just just a moment i'll stop my share yeah I have to show it off a bit because of the RGB love that is there. <laughs> okay. But yes, so, yes, so this, this is, is the sort of cool or rad looking build that I have. It's a 2080 Ti based uh, server or DL <laughs> server or DL rig, whatever you may call it. Just one minute. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. So uh, this is a sort of build that I put together, and uh, because of the Indian taxation and all, it went up to around four thousand dollars or so. And in in US, it will probably be cheaper. Uh, these are the specs: the eighty seven hundred K, sixty four GB RAM, and a twenty eight Ti. I chose sixty four GB RAM because I wanted to throw in more graphic cards later on, if possible. and if anyone is interested i could maybe quickly go over the components or is is anyone interested in uh, the choice of picking up the components yes certainly yeah so uh, i did not assemble this myself because i wasn't uh, very confident in my assembly skill so i went up to a, a third party retailer i had it assembled but i did my research on reddit and even on the Slack communities that are there. So to start off with the CPU, we chose the eighty seven hundred K. Even though the ninth generation is out, uh, what you would uh, want to look in in a CPU is the number of cores, and uh, secondly, can it support the required number of um, RAM or the required RAM that you want? and does uh, this is the most important thing that i sort of realized later on and i sort of got lucky with does it have enough pci bandwidth uh, to support your graphic card so what happens is when you plug in your graphic card it uses something called pci lanes and a graphic card for its uh, full performance or its best performance uh, it expects to run on a uh, 16 uh, lane 16 pci lanes and when you put together more graphic cards what happens is those lanes get divided so the gra your second graphic card might be getting eight or four uh, pci lanes where you'll start uh, noticing a performance hit 
and um, even one more thing that i realized after purchasing is when you plug in a m.2 drive which is again highly recommended for deep learning because of the speed gain and all that also uses four pci lanes so when you are purchasing your cpu and motherboard ensure that the number of pci lanes will be enough to not just support your current uh, gpu but also a future gpu and m.2 if if you plan to add um, more of them later on so this supports up to 64 gb ram which i think is more than sufficient for two to three graphic cards right now just have one and i did not choose the ninth generation because again uh, that's uh, slightly overpriced and there's not much of a performance difference in terms of deep learning for gaming uh, there is and ram over here is slightly an overkill this is again something uh, you know you could choose because if you going to install a m.2 drive that might be more expensive than your ram uh, especially if you're from india so if i go if i went ahead with the 64 gb ram i wouldn't have to worry much about the swaps uh, space that i allocate on the m.2 drive so i have it completely for the data sets and the os uh, gpu i chose the msi gaming x trio Uh, so there's a but there are a lot of discussions one thing i've realized is founders edition or the zotac editions aren't so widely recommended due to some reason zotac specially i i'm not sure uh, how people on here think but wherever i've asked that was uh, something i realized another thing blower edition gpus are slightly famous if you have or if you if you concerned with multi gpu installation in terms of heating and all so that's something also you might want to look in that will your uh, case be able to keep your graphic card cool enough or for example something that i realized later on is this graphic card uh, the gaming x trio it sort of uh, blocks physically all the three slots that are there for the graphic cards so even if i have to install one down the road even if i manage to cram it in there it'll overheat pretty badly and then i'll have to turn to water cooling uh, right now the build is in water cool it it uh, runs on okay temperatures so whatever graphic card you're getting and whatever case you're using be sure that it's nicely spaced enough or you get a blower edition graphic card so for the motherboard you just need to make sure that all the components that you want even in the future will be supported and since i was getting the msi graphic card i went ahead with the msi motherboard as well just uh, for the sanity of having compa uh, less compatibility issues and one more thing uh, the case i picked uh, it turned out to be really nice in the sense that it's uh, pretty well designed for airflow and all so it's it's the cooler master s500 and it has two cooling fans up front and you may also install two cooling fans in the top of the cabinet if that makes sense and uh, you have uh, again the exhaust fan at the back and options for uh, psu cooling and the other cool thing about this is uh, there are like modular components to it if you want to install ssds or uh, hard drives it's pretty easy to mount them also and for cpu cooler some people recommend some people recommend going for water cooling i realized that water cooling is only required or liquid cooling is only required when you going to the Over clocking your CPU, not the GPU. So I, I assume that for multiple GPUs, you might need a liquid cool CPU, which is not the case. You might need to liquid cool your graphic cards, but not the CPU. So an air cooler turned out to be okay. Or uh, like during the initial testing that I've been doing. And for storage, uh, because of price, I decided to go for a 512 uh, 970 Samsung M.2. and this is one more thing you would definitely want to pay attention is if you going for a graphic card that is this good in performance please make sure you get a m.2 that is fast enough uh, for the graphic card and this one was highly recommended so the samsung one apparently has the best performance in game um that's it about the build if you have any questions i'll pause for a bit and then continue with the fp16 benchmarks Then there's a question on the chat saying that have you considered AMD CPUs? Um, for deep learning, you cannot uh, mm. utilize something called MKAL library. 
so it's supposedly more optimized for uh, intel cpu and there's some performance gain and even if you check the error uh, logs that are there on stack overflow and all i've noticed that generally people are compiling on intel cpus and there's a wider community around that so it's it's cheaper and better in performance but since i did not know how to you know uh, better utilize that and if that performance uh, difference will actually make a difference even with that optimized library installed uh, for that reason i chose to get a slightly more expensive uh, intel i7 8 gen okay so one of the things that could be interesting to understand uh, so, you know sanya miss now you i understand that you went for a vendor who assembled it and and gave it to you right yeah now would it what kind of difference would it make if you assembled it yourself versus going to a vendor who does it for you i did not experience any price difference rather i had the sort of expertise that those guys had with pc building and also at places they did suggest a few components for example i was inclined towards the liquid cooling one and since this retailer had an idea what he of what he was doing he suggested that i stick to the air cooling one for the cpu unless i'm going to overclock so if you go to a good enough retailer he wouldn't charge you extra for a build uh, this expensive in my experience okay that is interesting right because all along at least the, the blogs that i read were all about you you know getting it yourself and assembling it yourself and i was kind yeah. of also hesitant to do it because i have never assembled one pc at any yeah. point of time right so forget a dl rig <laughs> so so i think it's it's comforting to know that there are uh, really good vendors uh, out there who would do it and even you know get all these parts assembled and in your case i understand they even did some stress test and uh, did it for two days before they gave it to you right yeah so i talked to them if they would uh, stress test it they they agreed to do two days of stress testing before shipping it so i never met the retailer which is very strange or uh, very strange thing to do in india and i paid them the money before having it delivered so uh, that that was interesting and one more thing uh, this graphic card this specific version of gaming x3 it's pretty heavy around 3 kg also and it will sag by itself if you do not install a support bar so they were very kind to let me know about that and they also installed the support bar and they did warn me that multiple gpu installation would definitely have overheating issues and i'll have to consider horizontal mounting or different solutions for this graphic card so that was another plus point for uh, for buying from a retailer okay that that's good so we have one more question that is there in the chat so the question is did you have trouble installing the cuda drivers on the gpu uh, i have tried installing cuda on a laptop due to some random reason i'll always face random errors that are never documented but on this it went uh, like a charm uh, it, it completed in the first go i have also written a blog post on that you could follow that if you have any issues okay so what i will do is probably i'll mute everybody and then you can unmute yourself oh, just okay. yeah okay so great um any other any other questions from the uh, team here on uh, you know the assembling a dl rig yes um, so you, so you installed the wind, windows on the on the hdd and uh and you limited to the 500 gigabyte partition and then uh is that how you did it and then yes. and then it's booting it's booting in linux so it's a dual boot system uh so the windows is self contained inside the hard disk in general it's supposed to be on your primary uh, drive which would be the m.2 in this case but i specifically asked it to be on the hard drive because i just want to game on it whenever i want to or just as those benchmarks that are there so these 3d benchmarks those run on windows mm-hmm. so for that i have it installed on the sdd and when i installed the ubuntu system on m.2 it automatically installed the bootloader and also i do get the or uh, dual boot screen even though they are on different drives which uh, i did not expect i i expected i would have to change the boot order every time i wanted to switch os okay any other questions okay i think i think we're good we can go on to the next part of the uh, sure. presentation from my side
So um, FP16 compute is sort of the best selling point on 2080 Ti from NVIDIA in the sense that its FP16 cores are much faster compared to the 1080 Ti ones. And uh, these are the ones that are used for ray tracing. So so-called tensor cores are faster for FP16. Sorry, Sanyam, sorry to stop you there. I think there are some more questions that have come on the uh, chat. So since they're related to the previous one, I thought let us take that if, if you're okay. Sure. So uh, one of the questions I think was Windows installation of the two TBHTD and Linux. I think that's what you answered just now, right? Yeah. Okay. The other question is uh, to talk about a little on the choice of your 10, eight, uh, 2080 versus the two 2070s for GPUs. Sure. So um, one thing I'm not an expert of parallel computing, even though it's easy, I admit that, but I struggle to, you know, even get to the accuracy that Jeremy does in two to three minutes. So that's why I chose to get a better graphic card. And secondly, my, again, I discussed with the retailer. So he did mention that if, even if I install two graphic cards, there would be serious heating issues in the house. And also the PCIe lanes would be an issue with that. So for that reason, I chose to, uh, I, I had to pay an extra $200 compared to two 2070s, but uh, this turned out to be an okay option even though I lost five gigs of memory in that sense. So just for us all to understand, so you were saying that the retailer had kind of warned you that uh, if you had installed two GPUs, for example, yeah. it would lead to overheating issues, right? So yeah. what, for example, if somebody really is interested in doing that, what would it take for them to do it? Um, there are two ways around it. One is the blower edition graphic cards. I'm not aware of how those work. And the other is water cooled or liquid cooled solutions. Okay, so there are options and that would involve additional cost, but there are options to get that done, right? The only thing with water cooling or liquid cooling is your insurance will cover that component. But if that thing, even though they do not leak, even if by any chance it leaks on other components, those would not be insured. Okay. Sure. And the dual uh, 2070s, can they also do FP16 or is that just the 2080 Ti? Uh, they can. Uh, the RTX cards have a better FP16 performance than uh, the GTX cards. Okay. So the one other question that I see here is, uh, why did you decide to build versus the cloud platforms? Um, in India, there's this issue of internet connectivity. So even if your internet drops for a bit and your notebook has been running for quite a while, you'll have to Again, restart everything. There, there are options to it. Uh, you could use Tmux and all. But after a while, it's, it's frustrating. And again, uh, navigating with data and all. And those slight differences or when you hit a tab in a terminal, when you've SSSed and you have to wait for those few seconds, those lag when, you, when you're going to be sitting down for five to 10 hours really make up a difference. That was one reason. Second is, of course, in the long term, uh, pricing is a difference. So again, 2080 Ti is a pretty fast graphic card and the equivalent cloud uh, option, I'll, I'll have the money back in say six, seven months. Fair enough. So, so just from personal experience, you know, uh, since I took part in one of the Kaggle competitions and I was doing it for uh, a week or so, I ran up around about $140 on the GCP instance right, for the month. Right. Just because I had kind of tasked that particular activity on the GPU for about a week. Right. So, yeah, you're really talking about big numbers here. And I was using a P100, which is like a slightly inferior version, I think, compared to what you have here. Yeah. So, yeah. So there is a cost um, eliminating thing that is definitely involved in the old stuff. If, if you, if your training loops are going beyond 10 hours regularly, not just, not just for a fun rate. Um, you might want to look into investing into a system. That's what I would suggest. Fair enough. Absolutely. Do you mean uh, 10 hours per month or 10 hours per day? Or per, day per day, per day. Per day, yeah. So I, I am a student. That's why I have that, that amount of time. Should I start with mixed precision training? Yeah, you can. I don't see any other questions. Yeah, please go ahead. So uh, whenever we're training our neural nets, even by default in fast it's some in something called, I think we have a question. Yeah, the GPUs available don't have that much memory unless Titan, the best is 11 GB. Oh, uh, I think Titan has 24 GB. This one has 11 GB. Uh, 
or you could again uh, sli sli means installing two graphic cards together or uh, 2270s if if you want that amount of uh, memory you would have 16 gigabytes and uh, at a much 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 lesser price than what a titan would cost a titan has i think 24 or 32 gb and those would give you 16 gb yeah yeah i think you can go ahead with your mix presentation sure so whenever we train a neural net in default in by default in fastly or any any framework it gets trained in something called fp32 or floating point 32 precision so with the like this thing has always been there you could always switch to fp16 but something called tensor cores are really fast at it and these are uh, these have really come up with the rtx cards so what happens when you switch to fp16 is uh, by default you using half of the memory so you have that advantage that you know you could chuck in more batch sizes and along with that it's also faster specifically on these uh, graphic cards so what i've done is i've run a quick test uh, generally the comparison are or the benchmarks are based on the performance and the performance is how many images can you crunch in one second and uh, i want you to do a realistic comparison so like when you're working on something and you 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 aren't concerned with the number of images being concerned but on how long does that take so i've got together with a friend who had a 1080 ti based build and we compared our timings so that is what this walk through will be about and there are three issues concerned with fp16 weight updates can be imprecise because you lose those 16 bits of precision and gradients can underflow or overflow because again you you don't have that amount of precision so uh there's something called mixed precision uh, because fp16 can be quote unquote unsafe so whenever it's unsafe you switch to fp32 and that sort of is mixed precision because you you using both the things together so a quick uh, overview of what happens use fp16 wherever possible input is cast to fp16 it's fed forward everywhere you use fp32 to compute the loss to avoid uh, the imprecision or overflow or underflow you use fp32 to uh, update the weights and there's something called loss scaling so you divide or uh, multiply by a loss scaling factor these these are the three uh, steps that happen and in fast.ai this is as simple as just putting a dot to fp16 uh, function id of your learner and these are the sort of timings that uh, we had in our test what what's happening here is we've run a test on cfar 100 just 30 uh, simple loops of training on all possible resnet architectures that are supported by fast.ai and uh, one more caveat is that you need to be on the latest cuda and uh, we did install pytorch and fastai from source this is one more thing that i learned that when we compiling from or when we installing from cuda so to speak conda or pip you do not get that specific optimizations very specific to your machine so if you compile from source which means that you install it using the setup.py file you will have some performance improvement it was noticeable i did not document that so i have installed both pytorch uh, fastai and even cuda from uh, from the official download instead of just conda installing them just to make it a fair comparison so for resnet uh, 18 i expected like supposedly this is uh, 60 to 80% faster as per the performance benchmarks but the best improvement was uh, like 1080 on 1080 ti it took 1.25 times the time and this is something i realized that for smaller networks uh, you do not see that amount of uh, performance difference so if you move on to resnet uh, 34 this is the mix precision uh, line on 2080 ti uh, 2080 ti and then it's normal fp32 or full precision then the same on 1080 ti and 1080 ti on full precision so in general it's always the fastest option to switch to mix precision i did not see any um, like delayed convergence or any other issues with that i got the free uh, memory boost that is i was able to convert uh, the batch size to 
two times not exactly two times 1.8 or 1.9 times but again that's that's a major factor and also it was very much faster than the other options and if you look at the biggest uh, network that we were able to compare for resnet 101 it was like uh, on 1080 ti it almost took 1.9 times the time to run the same network as it took on 2080 ti on on the mixed precision and uh, this we could not compare uh, our scores because uh, this was a time taking loop but for resnet 152 which is a big neural network uh, normal precision or full precision takes about 1.5 times uh, the time as mixed precision so my suggestion based on these few tests we also ran a official nvidia apex comparison which is to showcase how good is fp16 so fast it does support this very conveniently on other frameworks it, it's slightly dicey so again this was the comparison scale that we had and this is not the performance comparison this is how fast it took to run uh, the network so my suggestion based on these few tests that i've been running over the week is um, in fast dot a especially whenever you you on a recent graphic card uh, update to the latest uh, CUDA update to the latest drivers and just put that dot fp16 uh, to fp16 in, uh, against your learner because you will have double the memory it will be faster not very faster for the smaller networks but it will be faster and uh, i did not notice any delayed convergence because you might expect that you losing that amount of precision and there there might be a delay so that's that's pretty much about uh, what mixed precision training is So basically, if I if I if I were to look at it and see, I'm looking at about minimum, you know, somewhere around 15 to 20 percent of, you know, time gain at least between, uh, you know, doing a mixed position versus a, uh, you know, 32 uh, floating point position number, right? I mean, so, in theory, you would be running a 34 or 50 architecture. So looking at those figures, uh, these these are the gains you might expect. Correct. So we are at least looking at 25 percent, right? Comparing to like to like. Yeah. Uh, so which is like if you are running a loop for 5 hours and you know 20% on that is an hour more yes right so you basically without doing much you are able to uh, cut down your trading time and and you are able to kind of do it more quickly yeah. that itself is a great uh, return by itself in terms of uh, you know the the investment i would believe right and any questions we have uh, a few in the chat i think okay so i Okay, uh, I think the questions on the chat was related to the previous one. So I think uh, one of the questions is: Do you plan to do a benchmark comparing your performance with respect to K, T, P hundred, or V hundred? Uh, I'm not sure if this FP sixteen is supported on the uh, GPUs apart from V one hundred because those are what I have seen everywhere. So I, I do not have any cloud resources pending. I uh, spent all of them before investing into this. So if anyone is interested, I could share the script, and we could again compare that with this. Okay, so the says lambda in the benchmark on the 2080 Ti, and said it was 80% of uh, V100 at 20% of the cost. Yes, so uh, I've I've gone through the benchmark. Performance is how many images can your graphic card crunch in a second. That's their performance benchmark, and. um like th- that is slightly i would say an idealized situation because you're just testing how far can you push that so it's like racing on a uh, runway instead of driving it on the real road in the real road like just running a, a simple test on cfa 100 when you have other bottlenecks happening uh, this is something that i noticed which is why i went into the time comparison instead of the performance because i know it's it's good in terms of performance any other questions from the team okay i think there are no more questions as of now sure i okay so is haider in the in the call yes he is so haider uh, you're next in terms of explaining the uh, the importing of the pre trained models if you are there can you share your screen and take over so uh uh 
in the Kaggle competitions, I, I, I saw that uh, there are a few users using fast AI with, with models that are not available in, in, in our, our framework. Uh, basically, they, 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 are, they, are, they are importing pre-trained models from, from, uh, from other resources. Uh, this is a famous resource here. It's called the Cadian. Uh, it has our, around 40 to 50 pre-trained models uh, in PyTorch. Uh, I, I try to use, uh, I try to import these uh, into FastAI, but uh, the, the issue was uh, that the, the, the latest version, uh, the FastAI version one, uh, has changed the way that you can pass the model into the create CNN uh, uh, method. Uh, you, you, as you can see here, there are a lot of uh, models around 40 to 50. Uh, and, and some of them, they have better benchmark than the ResNet. Uh, for example, here the the the, the SE ResNet and the SE ResNext is, is 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 one of the best models that I, that you can use uh, in some of uh, the competitions. Uh, the winners usually use these uh, competitions, uh, these models in 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 uh, Kaggle competitions. So. Uh, mm, uh what the code that is that worked for me uh here uh, it is this is the uh, the usual uh, pets model uh, notebook and 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 uh, here the function that that that, that uh, we can use to 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 import the the models and this is the recommended way uh, in the github uh page but uh, this is not enough. Uh, you should you should uh, cut the model and change the head using this uh, create uh, create head function uh, create head method and fast AI. And you should wrap the, the this function. You should wrap it in, 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 into another function. So here I have the the the, the, the get fast AI model, uh, which, which is wrapping the, the function of the get model. And then I, fa I pass it uh, into the Christian method here. So this is the way that worked for me um, because I struggled with this for one, two days. So I shared uh, uh, the code uh, into uh, the forum. I, I will pass it to you uh, if you are interested in the chat. So yes, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. So, Haider, just to understand. So, uh, if I, if I see your uh, you know code, you have created a custom head, right? And you, and then you're passing that uh, custom head back into another uh, kind of function called get fast AI model. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. So yes. The, the actually, choice... the, the create CNN will, will will change its head. Uh, I mean, uh, the head will not be used uh, because create CNN will will change all heads into the the, the default fast AI head. But uh, without this uh, step, it, it, it throw an, an error. Uh, so I, I had to, to change it into uh, this way. Uh, they didn't work, they didn't work without changing the head. I don't know why, but, but uh, Christian and anyway, it will change the head into the fast AI head. Okay. So the reason I brought it up is since I kind of uh, also have gone through this uh, code behind the create scene. And so there is a choice of either doing the, the pre-cut that is already there in the uh, fast AI, or you can create your own has custom head, right? I think for the purpose of importing these models, the custom head is there because the, the pre-cut models may not work. In, in And that's why I think you're getting an error also, if I understand you right. Um, what I also wanted to understand is here you have done uh, a specific this thing of uh, 2014 includes 1496. 40, and then you're kind of taking it to the number of classes in the case of pets, which is 37. Mm -hmm. uh, for the benefit of others, you know, for each model that you would take, this number would vary, right? This 2048 into two would vary, correct? Most uh, models that I checked, uh, it is this number, but uh, here I have this uh, simple edit that, that uh, it, will Im it, it will give you a more general uh, solution for, for, for this uh, step. Uh, you can check up uh, the number of features by this method, num features met model and self CNN multiplied by two. 
The multiple by two is, is because uh, the adaptive uh, concat of, of fast AI is using two types of, of, of concatenation. So uh, you have to multiply the features that is output from the body of the, of the CNN uh, by two. Uh, so this is an important thing. Uh, actually, the, 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 most of the models, uh, they have 2,000 features, 2,048 features coming out from, from the body. But if, if there is another, other types of, of, of bodies that you are using, then uh, this, uh, this trick will, 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 will do the job. Also, maybe we can, we can change nc into data.c, right? Instead of saying 37, maybe nc is equal to data.c could be a good option, right? Because here, yeah, 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 37. Yeah. So yes, any yes, data yes. that you have, the number of right. classes of that will be, will be there. Yes, 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 you are right. Okay. So there is one question here from James. It says where the results faster. Which is faster? Which one? Where the results faster because of what you were able to import? Did you get better results? Uh, you mean the, the, the speed performance of... of uh... The, the speed performance of, 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 of this method? Uh, yes, I think he's replied. Uh, uh, the speed it should be the same. Actually, uh, FastAI will, will import from uh, the original PyTorch models. It's, it's, it's the same, exactly the same. The, this one, uh, the only difference is that uh, the, uh, the Cadden uh, GitHub repo uh, provided more, uh, more, more uh, models pre-trained for you. Uh, as far as I know, uh, Jeremy will, will, will expand the, the number of models in FISTI in the future. But this is, this is something that we can use uh, currently. Uh, another way of asking this question would be, for example, when you tried this with, say, uh, AC AC Next, AC Next 101, mm -hmm. on yeah. the PETS uh, data set, did you get a better accuracy than, say, ResNet? Uh, I didn't check it with the pets, but uh, for the human uh, protein atlas uh, competitions, many, many uh, has reported that the ResNext, SE ResNext uh, is giving them better performance. For me, it was almost the same. Uh, ResNet and ResNext and SE ResNext, almost the same. Uh, but others reported that uh, they get they get better performance uh, accuracy uh, some some competi compet uh, competitors uh, in human protein atlas they report that resnet 18 was the best for them so i believe many other factors will, will play in, in, into this uh, maybe 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 if i change the transformations or something else the number of samples maybe uh, maybe I, I, I can get uh, extra performance in ResNix. Okay. okay. One personal request is if you can submit a PR on this to the FastAI team, and if you can get it as a part of the original FastAI package, it'll be great. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it's quite interesting. And then one of, one of the things personally I want to ask you is this mobile net as a part of that uh, uh, models in Kadeen, or is it not there? Yes, yes, it's there. Uh, yeah, let me check. Also, if you've noticed the order uh, of arrangement inside the readme file, uh, those are based on how fast can they converge on, I think, or how better is their accuracy on ImageNet. Uh, pardon? From first, from first look, it looks like these are arranged in the order that you would expect better accuracy on ImageNet. No, I think it's just alphabetical uh, order. Yeah, actually, you can see here uh, in, the, in the GitHub page, the, the reported accuracies. So you see uh, results were, were obtained using uh, center cropped images of the same size during the training process. Uh, these are evolution on, on ImageNet. So uh, the, the best accuracy that they get uh, for is the PNAS net five large. This is in, in, in 80, 82 okay. uh, percent. And then going down SE net, uh, Polynet, Inception ResNet, uh, as era's next inception dual path and then 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 until we reach reach uh, resnet 101 resnet 50 here okay. so all these models are performing better than resnet, uh, resnet 50 
Although that we, we don't have it in fast AI, you know. So I was pretty, pretty sad that, that uh, all these pre-trained models is, is out there and we cannot use it. Uh, for the mobile net, I don't know. I don't think it is here. Uh, it's not there, but uh, squeeze net is there. You see, squeeze net 1.1 1, 1 .1 and 1.0. 1 also, Which I is, think we should... Is, I it. think better, better than mobile net, I don't know. Uh, these are mobile nets also. Uh, they, they can be used for, for handphones. Also, uh, the specifically the NAS net and the other networks are pretty memory intensive. So you will have to run them on very small batch sizes if you can on a smaller graphic card specifically. Yes, but uh, I think uh, the hardware here is the same uh, for all. So if they use smaller batch size, but even though they get uh, higher accuracy, then I think it's so still useful. Yeah, on a like speaking from experience on an 8 gig graphic card, NASNet was pretty hard to handle. Mm. Mm, I see, but if if they got uh, they here eighty two percent and the ResNet fifty, uh, where is the ResNet? ResNet fifty they get six seventy six on the same hardware. Mm -hmm. So even the 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 batch size is a little bit less, but but they got around six percent more accuracy. So no, I'm why not? Why not? The, uh, for smaller graphic cards, if it'll be able to handle even a batch size of one or four gig or six gig graphic cards. Oh, I see. I see. For lower end graphs, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. GPUs. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yep. I think it's pretty awesome, either you know what you have done, and 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 you know personally also knowing you that, you know, and it's great that you know having been a part of this, we are able to do this and submit a PR back to the uh, the whole part of the course as well, right? And make it useful for many others to kind of realize. I know you're... I, I I don't know I don't know why Jeremy the, he's he doesn't want to to include it but because uh, this has been uh, uh, discussed with with him uh, b before uh, I think and 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 some of the guys there uh, they, they he suggests he suggested for him that uh, there is these models in in Cadian he, uh, he he replied that uh, he's he's aware of the work of of, of, of this uh, repo. So I don't think it is very difficult to, to include it. I don't know why, why he's, so I, I, I suspect that he will accept the, the PR, but I will, I will try maybe, I will try. Sure, absolutely. I think it will yeah. be a good thing. It's a, it's, it should be, it should be easy for him. I know, I know, I know for me, uh, I, I was uh, confused why, why the Create CNN doesn't accept uh, an architecture. Uh, I mean, if I pass the 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 the, the model itself in create CNN, uh, it would give me an error. Uh, but uh, it turned out that there was changes in, in I don't know version 20, version 15, uh, 1.0, 20, 25 maybe. Uh, they changed the way the create CNN is 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 accepting the the the, the model architecture. It should be wrapped in in a function. Then uh, the problem was that when I, I used the, this function get model, which is the suggested way in the Cadian repo, uh, it gave me other types of error. So after struggling one or two days, I thought that maybe I have to wrap it in, in, a, in another function. So function inside function, passing into creation, and then it worked. And and no nobody nobody was very helpful in the forum. I tried to search, but I didn't find anything like that. Maybe people managed to, to use it, but they, they did not share it. Yeah. Anyway, this is this is something extra tool that we can we can use maybe someday. Absolutely. So if, if the PR is accepted well and good, but even if it is not, I think we can still do uh, with the code that you have shared with us. So thanks for that, Haider. I personally know that you know it's about one o'clock your time at uh, Malaysia, or probably one yeah. one <laughs> one thirty your time early in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining in and, and doing this. Uh, thanks to Sanyam as well for taking the time and talking us through with this. Uh, you know how to setting up the DL rig and the FP sixteen. Really, really important things for us to know because uh, we saw it in a lesson, and we also know now that if you really use it, there is a there is a benefit to the whole thing uh, to to do it, and nothing works better than you know substantiating what you're saying with uh, with with truth and results right and that and that's really great
So we're about 45 minutes into the session. We have 15 more minutes. So what I wanted to check with you is, uh, should we then now have our discussions and, and look at who would be willing to present for the next uh, session? Or should I then go ahead and do the uh, presentation on the one-shot learning for the uh, CMS network? So what, what would all want to do? Because I think the, the, the first day MOOC has kind of also started. Um, I think it started today or I think yesterday. I really don't know. But I, it's just now it has become public for everybody, right? Okay. Yeah, um, how about the, uh, the Siamese networks? Okay, great. So let me do that. Okay, so, so can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, okay. So basically why did I jump on this and uh, what made me learn is this, because um, we as a team, we had started up the humpback whale competition. Um, it's a pretty unique competition in many ways. Um, it has about 5,005 uh, classes of uh, whales, which you need to identify by their fluke. Fluke is basically the tail of the, of the whale, right? So all you have is a picture of the whale with its uh, tail and you need to kind of classify those, uh, you know, uh, whales <clears throat> based on that. So it is about 5,005 different types of whales. And there are total 25,361 images on the, on the training set at least. And, and the very odd thing about that is more than about 3,000 classes or more than 3,000 different types of whales have only one image sample, right? So if you use the default uh, fast AI methods and stuff, uh, we were not able to achieve a great accuracy. So you know, at least on the, on the Kaggle competition, the best that I could achieve without doing this was about 0.75. And uh, that's where we went into the forums and understood what people were talking about. And people were talking about, uh, you know, basically feature learning, right? Uh, so feature learning is basically a, a way of getting the model to understand what the features are. Uh, <clears throat> so given that uh, we want to understand how kind of uh, you, you can do it better. And uh, that is where we came up with the concept of one shot learning, right? So what is one shot learning? Uh, one shot learning basically is uh, a method of, you know, categorizing objects that you see on the images from a very few examples, basically one or very few examples, right? So that is what one shot learning is all about. And that kind of fits into the bill for this particular data set at least, right? Because about 3000 odd classes have only one image, um, and basically what I also understood is that this one shot learning is done via something called uh, CMS networks. So in this session today, I do not intend to go into the code. I wanted to give a very high overview of what this uh, CMS network is all about. So if you, if you really see what are these CMS networks, right? So here you, you see the basic uh, explanation of that. Basically, this is a neural network which has two or more identical sub network components, right? So a CMS network basically looks like this. So you have a model on the top and an identical model, which is on the bottom as well. And basically what you do is you set up a pair of images at, at the very basic through each of these models. And both of these models are very, very identical. And then you kind of take the loss function between the outputs of these two models and you kind of uh, optimize the loss for this uh, <coughs> two images that you come out. And based on uh, what you call is the distance, image distance, you can kind of come up with uh, the, the ability to understand whether these two images are related or whether they are different, right? So I've also given the credit of the, the person from uh, the medium post from which I have taken this image. You can read through this post to understand this, this in, in a more detail as well. Uh, moving on. Okay, so what does this do right so you basically as i said feed two images at, at a very basic minimum two different types of images into the network and it measures the euclidean distance between these two images in terms of the outputs and based on that it is able to identify whether these two images are similar or not in this case it is able to identify whether this particular image is of the same gender right if the two images of the same gender or not so that's what it's kind of uh, coming to now when we talk about this contrastive loss function, uh, one of the best things to do with this contracted loss is what I understood is this. It is called a triplet loss. 
right? Now, why is this triplet loss important? It is because of this. So basically what it means is you have an anchor, uh, basically an image that you know to be true of a certain class. And then you have two images, one which is of the same type as this anchor and the other which is of a different type from the anchor, which is a negative, right? So what it basically does is as a part of the learning process while going into the CMEs network, it is then able to identify that this actual positive image is very similar to the anchor image and the negative image is uh, very different from the anchor image, right? And that's why that is basically measured during the Euclidean distance. Uh, the simplest form is the Euclidean distance and I have seen uh, a lot of people do multiple things with it, right? They take the, the absolute difference, they take the absolute difference squared, they do the product of the distance and all that. So there are different ways to do uh, this particular part of the process. So that's how they expect this particular uh, CMS network to learn and, and do. So as a part of that, I have uh, come to the stage of uh, taking up the CMS network and, and, and doing. I can sh probably share the results in, in the next session or so. Uh, but before that, I wanted to kind of share with you the, res the resources available if anybody is interested to understand this a bit more. Uh, 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 one of the first year students, Raghava, I believe, has already put a Kaggle kernel out there as to how you can make a CMS network using fast.ai. So that's there for you. And then Radek from the fast.ai course, which most of us know, has also put two different, uh, you know, GitHub resources for us to one, identify flukes and the other is landmarks on the flukes. Right. So these are some of the resources that, uh, you know, we all can kind of utilize and see. And, and, and learn more in detail. So what I also plan to do is in the next uh, week, share some more details about how my experiments with the CMS network has gone through and share that with all of you. So that's, that's on the uh, uh, CMS networks. Let me see if there are questions. I think Heather has shared the things for the code and such. Any questions on this? Uh, DJ, uh, uh, what, what I what I read is that, that the, the choosing of of the images is important. I mean. Um, in the triplet uh, loss calculation, the best way to to make the 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 the, the, the network learning is, is to choose uh, the positive example as a, a, a difficult one. Uh, I mean, it's it's the most different same class example that you can choose, and the negative one is the most similar class. Uh, the, I mean, I mean to 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 make to make uh, to make it difficult for 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 the for the neural network. If uh, what what I what I heard from Andrew Eng is that uh, for the CMS network, if we choose randomly uh, the the training examples, it will not learn uh, unless we choose the, the the images in a way that is difficult uh, for the neural network. So any idea to how to choose those uh, images uh, depending very, on the difficulty? That's a very good question. So that's what I have also been dealing with also, right? So for example, now, uh, if you want really a, an anchor image versus a positive and a negative, that there is an assumption built in that there are more than one image, right? So because the anchor has to be very close to the positive as well. So at least two images of a certain type uh, or a class in, my, in, a, in the understanding that I have. Whereas if I, if I kind of take it for the data set that I have, 3000 odd classes have only one image. So the anchor and the positive are the same, right? Mm -hmm. So how do, I, how do I put this triplet loss? So I was not able to replicate that for uh, the humpback whale at least. Uh, but in, I would assume that in places where you have more than one uh, image or at least three, four images for a certain uh, data set, you'd be able to do these things easily. Uh, but of course I intend to read on this and, and get back, uh, you know, uh, possibly next week. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the questions that I see in the chat is the CMS network architecture, the only way to do one shot learning. Um, I'm not sure if that is the only way, at least that's the one that made sense to me and made me dig deeper to understand. Um, so that's why I kind of took that. If there are more, uh, maybe I can find out and let you know next week. Okay, another question is, doesn't this approach pre-bias the results, meaning you have to know in advance what your suspect is, the answer, or do you run against all possibilities? Uh, yes, James, in some ways, uh, this is something which is, which is related to the question that uh, Haider also raised, right? How do you kind of take the images without biasing the result as such? Uh, but, I, but I guess where you don't have too much data, this is one of the ways which is proven itself in, in terms of getting the results from whatever I have read. So uh, maybe there is something in there in that particular network itself, which is helping us to pre-bias the result. But if you, if you look at what it is doing, it is basically taking the result of the uh, images as it passes through the network and measures the distance between the results, right? So uh, from that perspective, it is kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, similar, right? I, it's kind of clean, I would say. All, uh, basically what it does is if there's a similar image, it says the distance between the them is, is less. And if it's a different image, the, the distance between them is kind of more. Yeah, in my, in my uh, data set, this is, this is what I am kind of up against as well as, as what you've written here. So you have to run against all whales. Uh, what I intend to do is to take a set of images where all of these 5,005 images are there, 5,005 classes are there, sorry, and then take the distance against all of them to find out the from the test set versus this 5,005 images, which are closer, which are not. So then the distance, uh, the, the threshold is a tunable parameter. Uh, you, you would actually figure out what threshold, you know, you would try different thresholds and see, see how your training set uh, performs and then pick the threshold based on that. Uh, so in my case, uh, Joseph, what I have done is uh, I have only tried to get the, the absolute difference between the two images, the distance between the two images, right? So what I intend to do is, uh, when I run this against all these 5,005 images of the whales, the test set against these uh, images, uh, I will order it against as in the least distance, right? So that would mean it is the closest to a particular class. Mm -hmm. And then take that result and kind of submit to the Kaggle and see what it is uh, coming yeah. up with. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Okay, hey, I think we're good. Uh, so let me stop sharing. And okay, so now, of course, opening it up for uh, discussions, and of course, also calling for uh, volunteers who would, uh, you know, want to do presentations next week uh, for the study group that we have. Uh, up to all of you guys. Um, I can chip in. I um, would volunteer to pr uh, present a paper, probably not next week, but uh, I don't know who makes the schedule or whatever. I just uh, am myself declaring hereby um, willing to uh, present a paper. That'll be great, Philip. Yeah. Uh also, if you can share which paper you were wanting to present. Yeah, that's, so that's unfortunately not already clear. I just thought about, uh, you know, going, uh, going to Archive and just uh, clicking on ML and just, just randomly pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So uh, what I was trying to say is if you can let us know at least a couple of days in advance. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, we can go through the paper and kind of also be available to make, uh, you know, comments or, you know, walk through that with you. Okay, yeah. Thank, thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. Any any other volunteers? I, I want to try uh, different image augmentation techniques and see what values work better because they're already like uh, preset in most of the cases. I'll see if I can experiment with a bunch. That would be good. Thanks, thanks, uh, Sanyam. That is, that is something then, uh, you know, <laughs> I have also tried to grapple it, right? So basically, yeah. we have so much of this what kind of uh, affine transformations of the images do you actually do against what type? For example, yeah. you know, Jeremy says, if it's a satellite image, it does not matter if you do a vertical flip also. Yes. 
whereas if it is not that then the horizontal slip is better and the vertical slip it is to be avoided but then how do you decide the parameters how do you decide which kind of probability you want to put and and stuff like that that would be really interesting to and know. for the other options that we blindly pick most of the times we aren't even looking at the preset value so i just want to check that how did they possibly arrive at the values and sort of uh, experiment around that value and see if that is really the best value absolutely that that will be really great thanks anybody else has anything to discuss ask clarify i also want to sort of offer like uh, i'm not using this uh, build to its complete extent that it's not running 24 hours so if in case anyone wants to work on something that's pretty compute heavy please feel free to reach out to me that, that's a very generous offer folks so some so wants to kind of lap it up please let sanyam know yeah i i have a, a request i've actually taken a break from fast ai for the last couple of weeks and i'd like to review the some of the lessons given that they've been ava- been made available again is there anyone who wants to have a have a quick review of, of all of the lessons you know give ourselves a target or just make it easier for myself if there's someone else to bounce some ideas off is there anyone else who's in a similar position yeah i'm interested in that um, as well can i i went through the lessons once but uh, and you know you need to go through them more than once so okay great it's same here i i i'm i'm going through the lessons as well uh, so uh, i'm more than happy to have a discussion I have lots of questions to ask though. Yeah, okay, I would I would also be interested in that actually. If if uh, okay. many of us are going to talk, we could probably discuss the first three or four lessons and the remainder in the next uh, meeting. Yeah, so that's a good idea. Maybe for three lessons we can do tackle maybe first the half sure. of the next week. Uh meet up. So, you know, I have st- I have done a bit of this before so I can tell you from experience it's it's, it's a really really rewarding experience uh, you tend to pick up new things when you go through the lessons again and the videos again and suddenly it's like you know how come I didn't you know understand this before or how come was this was not intuitive before so it's it's really a worthwhile effort to do that and yes going through the lessons again would, would kind of uh, make this whole concept stronger in our minds I agree In German we have a saying repetition makes the master. So if you repeat stuff you become better at it obviously. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I you know I don't, I don't know if you guys if you guys understand or uh, follow the 20 10000 hours principle right so if you want to become an expert at something basically I think it takes 10000 hours of practice uh, to be that. Uh, 10,000 hours of avast ai may be difficult to do but yes uh, practicing all these lessons and and going through them as much as possible definitely helps us understand them better so um you know is is there a specific uh, thing you guys want to do in terms of um, forming a, a slack channel or whatever or we just use the existing fast ai uh, deals Let's do that. I would I would say we just keep the same same Slack channel and then same format. It's more of like let's say uh, we decide say like three lessons first three lessons. So maybe whoever wants to go to first three and then we can have question answer series. Any any doubt and then anybody wants to explain about first three lessons. Uh, but we can continue the chatter on the uh, on on our Slack channel during the week and then we can we can have more specific questions. Perfect. maybe like a 5 to 10 minute review of each lesson in the next meetup maybe you could do that absolutely yeah absolutely so we have three things that we have agreed on one of course is for the paper that philip will, will present from uh, yeah sai whichever he chooses to do next is the image augmentation techniques that sanyam is uh, will you know offer to do and the third part is the review of the lessons at least lessons 1 to 4 if i believe or 1 to 3 Uh, a quick review of these lessons uh, you know starting from next week okay i i volunteer to do the um, review of the lessons great excellent perfect then so if there are no other questions or things to discuss uh, we can call it a day 
um, and uh, meet up for the next time uh, next week. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thank you guys. Yeah. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.